All right, this one is called Shameless AF. H. Brandon has actually good YouTube titles and thumbnails. It makes you want to click on it. It's a season two, episode two review. Let's check it out. Can I just say how absolutely shameless yeah. our boy Wagnon is? And I'm not... Chibi calls him Wagman. Brandon calls him Wagnon. Bro, it's a... It's a Wang. Wang. I, I, could, I, I can understand if someone says Wangnan, right? You, you see W-A-N-G, you might think it's Wang. But like no one's even no everyone just skips the end part. They just say wag or wagnon. Like what's going on? Hold the replay that section. Our boy Wagnon is. And no, he said wang there. I think it says the end was a little silent. I'm not saying that as an insult. It's wonderful. The number of times I have watched, especially in horror movies, mm. you know, just sometimes you gotta go low. You gotta put yourself at the other person's feet and just say, listen. I value my life, and I want to make it. So, yeah. evil person saying, oh, we're going to go swat. Yep, absolutely. I'm ready. I'll go get my pitchfork. The fact that he's like, listen, I think he ranked, like, he was, like, at 10, give or take. And it's, like, looking like, you know, everyone's getting red off of their, like, power level here. Yeah. And he's at, like, number 10 out of 12 when we... Yeah, in the beginning, in the fucking beginning when they skipped all the NPCs and then all the big boys started to go there. So he was probably pushed down to like, you know, fucking top 20 by then. We first see it. So top eight, he wasn't going to pass. And when our boy Bam comes in, yeah, sure, he's, he's under a fake name, give or take. But, um, you know, comes in and gets 130,000. I thought, you know, I, I was going to play it safe. I thought 50,000. I was like, you know, 80,000 is probably going to be real. I actually thought that it was going to be roughly 130k because like every score they kept doubling the last opponent to kind of just like show you that holy shit you thought that guy was strong nah doubled really where it's at no 130,000 just beautiful beautiful animation and it's the fact that Bam gets to to pick right like hey you who do you want to climb the tower with you and my boy's like nobody do you want me to lick your feet I'll lick your feet. The fact that he willingly got on, and then just the collective, like, you know, it was very clear who was probably going to first side around him. You know, there was that, like, mom, aunt, babysitter, I don't know what the hell she's supposed to be, and that girl. You know, like, it was very clear who some of the characters approaching were going to be. And I just loved it. It was such a, because they, because it's not like he immediately shoots it down either, right? Like, they go for, like, five minutes or so of people. Yeah, that's the fucked up part. But I'm going to let everybody crouch, kneel, and beg 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 for their lives and threw away all their pride but I'm, but I'm gonna let everybody do that and then he said nah no one's worthy bro could have rejected immediately but he let them cook to do it that's fucked up um like you know basically selling them themselves of why you should pick him or her and uh, he's like nah <laughs> bring on the next episode i have full live reactions over on patreon if you want check to see him my out good thought to any of these tower god episodes it's gonna be over there exclusively Oh, I love this. I would actually say I enjoyed this way more than the first. Now, I do want to bring something up. And then after that, we're probably not going to talk about the rest of the season. I was actually pleasantly surprised because there was obviously the controversy with the art style shift. Obviously, there's going to be the people who will say... Was there actual controversy? I felt like the art style shift was such an insignificant change. And it has no bearing to be like a focal point of discussion. I think people are trying to fucking milk whatever fucking thing that they can. Or outrage on Twitter or some shit. I find no difference... There is a difference, but nothing that makes me think, oh my god, this is unwatchable. Like, oh, it's now more in line with the new art style with the webtoon and all that other stuff. But I mean, there, there was some heated ass debates yeah. before this show even came back about the new style. I went and I didn't rewatch, but I skimmed, I looked at fights okay. and I skimmed episodes of season one. Get and that bitch out of my, get that bitch out of my face. Say, I do agree with the sentiment that season one had a more unique and interesting art style. Yes. However, season two has better animation. I'd have to go check him. I'd have to uh, go see specific fight scenes, but yeah, season one for sure. Some, some, the way that they drew the lines, it, 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 I, I think the idea was trying to make the webtoon come to life. Season two, it kind of stopped doing that, but I don't find it a distraction or something that makes me think, oh my god, this is unwatchable. Animation quality, though. Season two versus season one. I mean, this is like me coming up. I didn't even wait four years either. I watched like everything in one go. Maybe I'm just too slow to catch up on certain, certain things. Now, 
people, some people might actually prefer the new look of season two, whether because it's closer to the source or this or that. I just think season one was a one of the most visually creative in the past few years of anime, 100%. However, while I don't think season one was badly produced, like some people used to argue when I was covering season one, I do think the animation, Yun. especially the glimpse we got, you know, with, you know, just the eruption of aura or last week's action, I do think the animation, but... You could absolutely nitpick art direction and stuff, I think, in this episode. But I just want okay. to throw that out there. I'm of the belief. I'm happy Tower of God's back. I'm going to have a great time. Me if too. it looked like season one with, you know, this type of animation, I would have been absolutely 100% happy camper. But I'm still just glad to be back. But I just wanted to throw that out there because I did want to take a look because I didn't want to just go off my own memory. I think that'd be unfair of me to just be like, oh, people are overreacting. So I actually do side with kind of both sides of the fandom in to some degree. But that's just me. Now, we... Smart man farming both, fence-sitting, just like me. Great. ...have an interesting episode. So, last week, you know, we, he was a... It's a good thing the buzzer went off, because Wang and, uh, he would he would have been dead, I'm pretty sure. So, Fug Life Bam over here is basically Fug just, Life. I mean, after getting pushed by Rachel, clearly some shit happened, and the Fug Life, uh, it, it chose him. He didn't choose it. And I am of the mindset the bomb is actually not that different. I'm gonna die on this fucking hill just because of the memories of Rachel that he had. I think that soft kid is in there, and because they intentionally don't let us see his eyes, it makes me think that like, nah, he faking this shit. He faking this shit. Every cold thing that he did, I don't think he's doing it in the, for the purpose of being cold. The direct example is him rejecting all the seven other candidates was simply because he didn't want them to die if because they probably can't keep up with them. I think that's what's going on. He obviously also has huge trust issues now because Rachel pushed him. Once you fucking cut these bangs up, bro, show me those eyes. That same innocent kid is in there. I, 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 I really want to believe that. And does just have, uh, I don't know, chicken lover? This dude had like a Love. shirtless like chicken lover or something. I don't know. He also ate a lot of chicken too. Bro was like advertising KFC the entire time. It was, it was something else. So everyone just kind of like is getting their like shit read. And obviously certain characters are, you just... You're like, yeah, that, that makes total sense. Um, when you can trip and fall and you get that ridiculous of a reading, what's your actual attack looking like? That's the thing I don't understand, right? Because like, Bomb also didn't punch it, but he did like a Shinsu type of attack. He placed his hand over the orb, right? So I thought like, it's not a matter of how hard you hit the thing. It's just simply just testing how much Shinsu capability that you have in your body. So her tripping doesn't mean that she got a, like a bad score. It means that that's just... That's her Shinsu. That, that was my interpretation, but it could also be that, yeah, she just fucked up and she tripped. And if she actually tried to punch that shit with all her might, like, her score would have gone up. I, I'm not sure which one it is. Prince was a bit of a douchebag, and by a bit, I mean a major D-bag. Yep. Um, I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, if Bam has to pick, I was like, who is he going to pick? He's probably going to pick, like, the weakest people so he could quickly eliminate them or something. So I was like, okay, Prince definitely ain't gonna make it, but dude's rich he enough did that he make can it. just probably skip the line again if he really needs to. I think it's very clear that Bam's probably gonna have to be forced to pick, or even if, like, he doesn't have to pick and they'll pick for him, like, whatever they're about to do in terms of, like, the bet was made, like, hey, if you win, you, you can climb this shit solo. If you lose, you gotta take a team. And he's like, okay. So doesn't that mean he's probably gonna lose? Like... Bomb being a ranker like that makes, I, I find it hard to believe because like the difference between a ranker and a regular, not, he's not a regular, he's an irregular, but like, it's just tremendous. And like someone also said, Love's Shinsu record score was 13 mil compared to Bomb's like 13, 130k, which is now portraying instead of 2x, per, uh, 2x differences for the past candidates, this is like a 10x difference. Now I know that he's got Flux Slayer techniques and training and stuff. But plot-wise, does it make sense to bomb to climb solo and let everyone else behind? Wangnan has been so much like, there's been a lot of scenes to develop Wangnan so far. He gets a lot of lines. In fact, he probably has the most amount of lines in Tower of God in Season 2. Young Girl showed up, right? There's these other characters that seems kind of important. AK Raptor, the other big boy who seems to have a side mission of like trying to find somebody that he's missing. So it doesn't feel like bomb is going to climb solo. It feels like he will either lose or have something else happen to the point where other people like those people we saw in episode one and two will climb with him for now okay bet so i'm interested i definitely hope bam loses so he has to have a team and it'll be very fun to see who's probably some of the more obvious picks to be chosen but it will be interesting because i think he's going to be able to because if it is up to him to pick 
I think he will pick probably the weakest people or some of the people who will be easy for him to eliminate because for him at the end of the day, what is his mission? You know, everyone's thinking he's rocking some cosplay over here with the fug life and he's like, nah, this is all legit. I'm going to go kill Jawhead. And I'm like, the fact that you so just casually admit that out loud is, is yeah. fantastic. Now, obviously there's, um, I can kind of see like, if it wasn't on the poster, right? If it wasn't on the poster and, you know, it was like wanging in some other characters, like it's, it's impossible not to realize it's Bam, and apparently in the so I had mixed responses on this. Some people being like, actually, yeah, it did last a little more in the webtoon before you realize. Other people saying, actually, it was pretty quick that it was obvious it was Bam. So I the moment that we finished season one, I, it's like it's clearly Bam. Like he was in the end of season one. That's like what? Like you don't think time skip's gonna happen in a training arc? Like. What do you think? It's fucking Bam's dad? I thought it was pretty obvious. I think just different people had different experiences of how to realize if that was Bam or not. Um, like I said last week, it's like the difference of when, you know, we were reading Attack on Titan Monthly and we're like, we're pretty sure that's Aaron, but we don't have VAs. We have a singular panel. We're like, wait a second, does he have long hair now, right? There the meta thing to do of checking, like, what the voice actor is for Veal and checking with Bomb. <laughs> you could do that, yeah? It's very different in an anime form, so it's very clear. Especially, you know, just having all that alone, add in the Rachel flashbacks? Come on now, we ain't a blind man, right? So, I actually appreciate that, you know, clearly at face value there's, like, this fake identity hell. This girl's thinking that he's a girl. Uh, I just think he decided why, why the hell. That was just because, like... It's not supposed to be co-ed, right? These rooms are supposed to be like, I don't know, you're a girl, then you're gonna get assigned a girl and stuff like that. I thought it was like the long hair and like, and Bam's like, I don't know, fucking androgynous look. Hell not. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised though if the long hair is like a cover up, like in, if his identity at face value is saying girl or something. I'm not sure though. But either way, just like, there's so many things I want to see, but surprisingly, and this has to really commend Tower of God's writing right now. The fact that Wagnon is probably my most anticipated thing in this season right now, just because this character is so I interesting. Love. Like the the drive to climb the tower and doing whatever it takes. You want me to lick your boots, sir, to climb this tower? I will do so. And it's like I, honestly, I just can't help but respect the fact that he's willing because if he fails here, life's over, right? So I don't know if I like Wagnon's character so far. Like you like him because he was willing to lick a fucking boot to climb and throw his pride away. I think that's fucking. Like, he's doing what he's got to do to survive, right? I'm pretty... I think Wang Nam being possibly Princess Zahad is very interesting. I don't like the fact that his powers are like a Pokebomb. Like, in any anime, I like the characters to be, you know, fully sufficient through their own fucking skill sets. But dude is just throwing these utility bombs the entire time. It just doesn't look very hype. Maybe it'll change later on, but we'll lead Wang Nam, you know, cook for now. Sometimes you just need an odd duo, and I think Imposter Bam and Wagnon and his Pokeballs are definitely going to be a powerhouse team. No more Blue Turtle and Black Turtle. Instead, we have Black Turtle and Yellow Turtle, I guess. But, uh, let me know what you thought down below, because, honestly, I enjoyed this one more than the first. Maybe it helps because now I'm, like, properly backseated. I'm, you know, back in the Tower of God train. But I don't know, I just actually enjoyed the test tape. Both episodes were great. I think that the hype fight scenes in episode one was better, but like the testing, I, I just love metrics, tier lists, scene comparisons, you know, punch bag tests, you know, and you get isekai, you know, power metric test, what kind of rank are you, stuff like that. It's those kind of episodes, right? So it was like a personal bias for me. It was great. Taking and then just the out of pocketness of Bam, like letting everyone grovel at his feet to say, nah, I'm good. Fantastic. Let me know what you're feeling down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell. Man, H. Brandon is actually so good at min-maxing his time. You know why he ended this video just at 8.02? Because 8.02, 8 minutes is the minimum amount for you to, you know, put in uh, mid-roll ads, which makes a lot of money, so... <laughs> Bro, it's min-maxing the fuck out of this, but hey, please go give H. Brandon a sub. Like this video if you haven't. I thought that... Animation differences, it doesn't really matter to me. I thought that episode 2 and 1 were pretty hype. The one thing that I wanted more discussion was about, like, him, Bum, like, openly stating that he's a slayer of Fug and saying that his goal is the King of Zahad. But it's like, shouldn't you want to be more discreet about this? And the more I thought about it, it's just like, nah. They want it to be public. They want, you know, people to hear the news. That's why we're flexing. I mean, even the jacket, the drip, right? It's, it's literally Fug Slayer member. And another comment said, 
Like, think of it as, like, gang members, right? Bloods and Crips. I'm not sure if that's an adequate example, but sometimes you want to let people know that this is our territory. You see these flags, you see this logo or something, you fucking with us. Fug, don't fuck with us. I think maybe that's the direction they're going and why they don't have you to discreet, but that's it for me.